Hello everybody and welcome to another episode on the workbench. What I'm doing here is just finishing off some Bronze Age miniatures. And, well, they sort of look very Bronze Age, but they're actually made by Bronze Age. And what we're looking to do is, here we go, we'll just grab a couple that are finished here. Nothing that is super earth shattering. One of the main reasons, well, there's some freehand here. There's a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of robes, a little bit of fur, a little bit of non-metallic. So I thought this is, it's got several different things that we can work on at the same time. There's snow effects too. So lots of fun little things happening there. But with all of the true scale stuff that I've been working on, and I, I would say even the Song of Ice and Fire stuff practically counts as true scale. What do I mean by true scale? Heads and hands, even if you've seen, especially the Rohan stuff or any of the Lord of the Rings, the hands are way smaller than that, and the heads are way smaller than that. The, the, true, the heroic scale tends to exaggerate heads and hands. They're, they're just ginormous. And yes, that's a thing. <clears throat> so, now there's advantages to that, because this huge face right here, I was able to put all the greens, all kinds of nifty stuff in there. The hands, when they're larger, they're easier to paint. It's easier to get these big honking weapons in there. So there's advantages of the heroic scale. Now sometimes the sculpting, these are obviously sculpted by hand years ago, not digitally. So that leads to a different type of sculpting and everything else. So that's why I thought it would be interesting to, to see something like this. And like I said, we've got a few of these here that we've finished off. And I just wanted wanted you to see here. Let's crank up the saturation a bit here. You can see some of the greens there in the flesh tone, a little bit of the rosiness there. So we're going to work on this design. We'll do some metals here, do some different things with the cloaks, and obviously finish it off with the snow effects. Now, what I also wanted to do is show you a couple of. Here we go. We'll just I'm going to throw these other colors out here just to have something a little bit different because I don't want people to think that I only ever work with those colors. We've, we've even got the stained olive here, and I think this is a ochre type color. Yeah, golden brown. So we'll throw these out there too on the palette. How much we use them or don't use them, I don't know. But I just thought it would be interesting. I and mean, we'll still stick with some of the usuals, like the off-whites and everything. But this is it's for you guys here. I thought you might be able to get some interesting information out of this. You know, okay, how do you approach something like that? You can see just how broad obviously it's green stuff that's been pushed around. How do you treat that? How do you treat the inside of this cloak here? Is it is it skin color? What is it? Actually there's another color I might throw in here too. It's one I used to use a lot. And back in the day, this is this Karn Maron Tan. It's essentially sort of like a dark skin color here. But I use it a lot for leathers and, and skins that are, say, like cloaks and such. The inside of of a fur pelt, whatever. Because this guy has, yeah, same thing here. We have another critter hanging off of this guy's back. We got some wood here. So there's a lot of different surfaces. These are very different from what you usually see me do. So what we're going to do is we'll break out our wet palette again and we'll throw some of these colors out on there and we'll get down to it. So we got some new colors out there on the palette. And you can see this is just a dirty old palette. It's one that I've been using the whole process of painting these guys. Because the idea behind this, this is a workbench thing. This is not some, well, we start from scratch tutorial. I just wanted to see what it's like when we're just working on things. So here's some of those new thing. That's that golden brown. That's that sort of yellowy tan. There's our mint green. This is that yellowish green. We got a blue liner out here. There's a clear green over there. We'll just start mixing some of these together. And... Let's see, so this is brown liner over here, and some of that tan, 
and a little bit of pallet sludge because hey that's our new favorite color pallet sludge that is a thing now without a doubt and what we're gonna do is just gonna throw some of that in a few areas here I'm gonna put it on the axe handle here we're just gonna get it down here maybe even a little touch on the base and I'm not going to get too involved with the bases because they are mostly going to be covered with snow. And what we'll do is we'll just leave that go. And let's work our way through here see if there's other ones. Now I can see that I've already... See, I might go with some kind of a... Not necessarily a tan color on the pan. That was what I was originally thinking, but maybe I'll do that whole blue and white stripe kind of thing, sort of... <clears throat> well, picked or kilts or whatever you want to call that. But here, let's do another axe handle here. Like so, we even just throw a little bit of brown in there. Looks like that's pretty much his hair color. And we'll hit some of the, some of his shoes with this here. Boots, shoes, whatever the case may be. And then just move along here. Yeah, let's get a little more of that tan. So he's got, a, obviously, carrying his bow back here. We'll actually throw a little bit of just tan there, mark that out. And then if I'm going to do, if I did green pants, or if I do that same, or let's say green and white stripe there, yeah, we might do that. And here, will we do the nut work thing, or maybe I'll do some quarters on that. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to that. Now, I had done the usual start of this. So, you're, you're sort of picking this up, I don't know, midway through episode 3, if this was an army painting series. So for those of you that don't get to see the Army Painting Series, because that's the, the $15 pledge, this gives you a little taste of what goes on. I, I don't think you've really ever seen one of these. You've seen me do YouTube Lives. I'm going to hit this little scabbard right here. you see me do the YouTube Live thing, but I don't think... I'm trying to think. Yeah, you've uh, I've done maybe the Blood Bowl stuff, but even that was probably more of a YouTube Live so this is something I want to, well, I kind of have to do more of. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hit his hair here, too. But this is going to be a little more along the lines of, say, a blondish type color. And, oh, look, we got this more orangey-brown. And I'm going to just do that right away, just to be able to do a little bit of wet into wet there. Just a little bit. We're also going to hit his mustache, his beard. Because I've got, for battle reports and stuff, I just have a ton of Song, Ice, and Fire stuff to, to paint. And not everybody wants to see a start-to-finish army painting thing of those. Because some of the units, let's say they're free folk, well, the basing is all the same because, hey, it's an army, so why would you want to then see the same basing process over and over and over again? Granted, if it's cavalry or something like that, then that's a whole different thing. Or if it's a giant, large creature, whatever, you know, if it's obviously different, we'll hit that. So look at just no time at all. Just a few strokes here and there. It's already starting to get us a really nice hair color. This is also, you haven't really seen anything like this, a true scale thing with the face, or a, a heroic scale with the faces where you can really get a good peek at those. Here, I'll, we'll set him aside, and now we got this lad right here and while I've got those yellows going I'm going to find so here's another one that's got a similar helmet 
So we'll try and, and do a same kind of thing there. So let's get ourselves back to our little bit of a tan right here. The crown or crest of this, I guess I should say. Hit that. And the mask. I'm also going to hit these. Heck, I'm actually going to give him a little bit of a gold chain there. And there's so much other stuff that's that's grayish or bluish gray. Maybe a little accent like that couldn't hurt at all. There's another scabbard and same thing there. We'll hit the shoes. Why not? The other thing that I have been doing is trying to... Well, not necessarily plan out all of the upcoming <coughs> upcoming official Army Painter series. But there's some figures that I had been saving for other things. And I thought, well, these could make some pretty interesting Army Painting series. Some of them are older figures. Oh, jeez. Gosh, some of them might almost be... There, there's some GW figures from, say, the early 2000s, from when we first got into this. I'm going to grab some of this, some of the red liner there. And I just wanted a little different axe handle color here. And I thought those could be really interesting. Because I haven't done... Well, it's some just straight-up fantasy miniatures. Yes, Lord of the Rings is fantasy, but they're essentially... What I painted is just they're, they're humans. They're humans dressed in essentially unusual medieval clothes. These, there's some chaos, well, corn berserker type things, and some Slaanesh demonettes from the old days, not... I, like I said, the early 2000s. So I thought those could be some interesting army painting series. They let us do some different stuff with basing. Kind of basing that I haven't actually been able to do for a while. Because there's just so many of those green stuff world texture rollers. And there's so many other fun things they're churning out. That I thought, well, this this will give me a chance to utilize some of those. If you're wondering why this is so... Now, here I'm going to actually do something for you here. So this is that uh, Karn Marone Tan, whatever that was, that Marone Tan. So I mixed it with a little bit of red liner, and we're just going to throw that on the inside of the inside of this right here. We'll darken this down. We're actually going to throw a little bit of green in there too, because I just wanted to get that down. And now... Here's a bit of green liner. Just mix that right in there and just kind of wet blend it. I don't know if you could really see that very much. Something I do a lot with the oils. And if you're, you know, I'm just looking for a way to also carry that into the acrylics too. Because this way you get some, some wet blending there. Now we're going to take more of that green and we'll do it on the other side this is the green liner here hit the other side of this like so and while we've got it here we're gonna grab some of that different lighter green and we'll just let that mix right in there and you can see we're going to carry some of that green out to here, maybe on his shield touch. This is the other thing, too, is you haven't really seen me paint miniatures where each one is kind of a, well, very different color. You see me ones where even the Rohan, where there was a little bit of variation from one figure to the next, mostly because their clothes were different, but here I thought this could not be another interesting 
thing for you to see where you've got to make clothes that are dramatically different one from the next but still be somewhat cohesive like I said I'm always trying to come up with something that has value for you instead of just oh look here's another non-metallic video yay or look another object source lighting video that's fantastic that's great but real world situations that's real world painting huh? there's another phrase I guess this also then takes that whole the color if the color goes somewhere it must go everywhere it kind of takes that to a whole different level now because well all right it's going everywhere on that one miniature what about the rest of them that's where things get interesting now like I said I, I'm gonna be sometimes bouncing around between different things because that is when I'm doing my own army painting I don't get into this well okay here's all the cloaks and then all the faces and all of this no I'm usually like here <laughs> this is supposed to be about cloaks and stuff or clothes in general and when am I paint I'm painting the base and I'm also painting these metal oh gosh I keep wanting to call them glaives but that's not really what they are those those shin shin armor type things so but guess what I'm even throwing some of that gray on the helmet why did I put that on the shin guards here well I'm painting on the base right I want it to be reflected on here it's supposed to be metal so well you got to reflect it there did the same thing even on his axe and again I realized we're supposed to be painting clothes and it seems like I've been mostly painting here, bases, weapons, everything but cloaks. But we got one right here, and we're going to get to that. So here's some of that red liner. It's actually mixing with a little bit of the blue-ish mint green color. Like that. And you can see we're just working off of that same stage where we took our sponges and we ripped we, we just ripped away some of the color as we did those initial glazes and actually get a little bit of the clear red in here so again this is where we just start to make each cloak a little bit different I also have, and this is going to sound crazy, I've got some Mantic figures that I was going to do. It was an army I was working on. I have a whole bunch of figures prepped. And I'll, I think I'll maybe, I'll just do a couple of uh, so color test ones. Put those up, maybe just some photos so you can see. The only reason I wanted to do those is because A, they would allow for some really interesting color combinations but the basing would be really really different we're talking seashells plants aquarium plants just maybe treasure type stuff or broken rigging from ships and I thought that could be something fun it just gives you a whole nother look at basing I could do a separate episode on basing just those guys that no, not necessarily horrible but there's something about doing an entire army of basing along those lines that I think you could get some some value out of that there was obviously going to be more Song of Ice and Fire army painting tutorials as well that's going to be some of those for Song of Ice and Fire will be for the Starks because I want to do the true metallics or the TMM whatever you want to call it on those guys which you've really haven't seen me do any kind of metallic paints on an army 
I did a little touch of that on the Soviets, but that was just on their guns and a few very isolated areas. I think with the Starks, obviously there's a little more armor there. Now here's an interesting thing. So how do I lighten up that red without it getting too pink? Well, if I throw a little bit of that yellow in there. Now, so you can get a little bit lighter. But yet it's it's now it's not going to get too far into the pinkish range. So we'll just keep moving along here. Like I said, these these type of projects they don't necessarily allow for that whole well, I'm just going to do this one part of it and then I'm just going to do this part of it. Sometimes you have to adjust your plan a little bit and be flexible. There's even potentially some Blood Bowl teams that I want to use as, say, an army painting thing. So I just, I've been gathering those together. Uh, the, I even have some 40k stuff. The, the difficulty was that I didn't have, it's all that stuff is on 32 millimeter bases now. And I have zero 32 millimeter bases here as in nothing whatsoever so I had to find those get some now that those are in hand I can start working on those things so there there is rhyme and or reason as I go back to that tannish color here for his boots to the army painting series There really is. Now that that can be sometimes influenced by whatever commission things are going on or when we're heading off to conventions or something like that. So I'm going to go back to this lighter brown for his hair and the mustache. And it looks like, yeah, it's can't tell if that's a torque or a brooch or, or a clasp could be any one of those three things as far as I know now here when I add some yellow to that it's a little less brilliant and orange like it's a little more subdued and again, I just I had the color already started so why not just why not just do it? Let's we'll keep going with his hair here, and it's going to. There's going to be more additional lights from there, but we're just going to let that have a chance to set and dry. Now this one was going to be much lighter here, so guess what? That color, bam, right into here. So this is something you couldn't really see because he was kind of off camera, is I knew this guy was off on the other, just sitting here waiting for me to, to grab him. Chess, chess maneuvers, right? We're always thinking ahead. It goes for weathering. It goes for lots of stuff. It also, hey, it goes for hair, apparently. Apparently it goes for hair. And actually, I'm going to use that color a touch on his boots so this I, I suppose if you're wondering how these things get done just so insanely fast because that, that's how people see it this stuff just gets done so fast well these are the kind of efficiencies you're going to have to build in if you want to be able to maintain a certain work level now there's other aspects to this too. I essentially started working at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, 11.30, whenever the heck it was. And while I was doing different tasks, actually 
I didn't do anything that involved painting until probably about 8 o'clock tonight. It's now mm, 2.28 in the morning, and I will still be working for at least another two hours. And this is just one of seven days in the week. And all the other seven days, sometimes they're punctuated by different things that I have to work on. But that's kind of what every day is like. Basically, <laughs> kind of go till you pass out. At some point, revive, begin the process again, rinse and repeat. So for those of you that are, say, looking for to do this as a living, and I just, I've seen a few people on, on Facebook, it's, it's kind of fresh in my mind, because I've seen a few people on Facebook that, that they didn't, they tried to make it work, and they just couldn't make it work. One of the reasons, there's a few key things. As I keep lightening this up, so I get lighter and lighter here. You have to be able to work insane hours, even when maybe it's uh, something you don't really feel like painting or a color you don't really like or whatever. You also have to be willing to spend a lot of time answering messages as in a lot I sometimes spend almost two hours a day answering messages or sending messages myself that need answers and that process pretty much goes day and night are you willing to do that or are you willing to learn how to pack and ship miniatures are you willing to take the time to do that every day because that's I'll be shipping out packages this week well like I do every week are you willing to do that and these are the question when you're deciding is this what I want to do I'm doing the same thing as I did on that other helmet because some people they cannot make their hobby, their job, and especially when they find out how difficult it can be. It can be really, 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 really difficult. And I, I guess I'm just bringing this up because, like I say, just recently I've seen a lot of cases where things just didn't work out for people so I just took some of that new greenish color mixed it with the brown liner and I'm throwing a little bit of that on the base I'm throwing a little bit of that here on this tunic I might even throw a little bit there on that shield gonna get some on the axe here why now going to be reflecting some of that ground well gonna have to put some on there now let's get this a little bit lighter here go right into the wet green let that mix together we're using the usual craft brushes so far I think with the exception of the eyes on some of these guys it's been painted almost exclusively with these craft brushes here we can go even a little touch lighter with that like so I think that was the last one so we had some of these where we wanted to do maybe some kind of striped pants thing where was ah there was this one Let's see what we can do here now I'm going to get me some green here. That's that clear green. Touch of green liner. Like so. Like that. And 
going to leave that just to dry there. And we're going to find another one here. Or I had thought about... Yeah, so how many shields? Looks like I got one shield will do freehand on, like you saw with that not work. But this one, I wanted to do something a little bit different here. So here's some green. It's that kind of clear green mix that we made. So we'll throw that there. And we're going to also do the same thing here, like we did on that other guy's pants. Like so. I'll set those two aside. And is there any other one that needed some lighter green? Now this one does, but it's a different, it's a little different type of green here. So we're going to mix a maiden flesh with that. And is he... We were working wet into wet there. I let it just dry a little bit. And oh look, now it's no problem to get some paint right over the top of that. Okay. I think we'll probably paint that as a bit of a gemstone there. Why not? I'm even going to go a touch lighter in a few spots here. All right. Now this is more of a grayish green type cape, so we're going to take brown liner, take that other green, and grayish green. Some of you that just saw the Rohan video, this cloak is going to be sort of similar to those. And why is it this color green? Well, it sort of sets off the hair pretty nicely there. And here, let's going to make it actually even a touch on the bluish side. So that's a little bit of our mint green that we'll be using on some of our weapons there. And you can see this cloak, it's the sculpting is a little bit unusual. It doesn't flow compared to, say, the kind of more digitally sculpted type stuff that you see these days. It's kind of from a different era here. So we're going to go another step later, and then we'll just let that also have a chance to dry a bit. And we can come back to it later. And we did that also with the, the Rohan stuff. We didn't necessarily paint every single cloak all the way up to the brightest highlight, because, remember, we always want that context. We don't want to go too far with just one thing. I had to kind of accelerate the stuff with the faces a little bit more than I normally do. It just, for reasons, there were just, there were some colors I was using and there were other figures that I was working on at the same time. So you see, I think it's eight figures here. There was seven other ones that I was working on at the same time as these. So what we're going to do here is now gather up some lighter tones or something like that maiden flash. And what we'll do is try and get a little bit of stripes going on here. We'll just drag this down like that. Might even get a little bit of the maggot white in there to make it a little less on the reddish side. Now we've got obviously places where the stripes got to be broken up because it's going through folds. This is going to be tough for you to see because shields in the way but we got to paint that line there anyways. 
And one last, and you see I just sort of paint a few bits of it. I'm trying to paint the entire thing in there. It's all going to be in shadow anyway. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Like this. Trying to follow the movement in his leg. That's why this is angled like this instead of just being straight down. So we got ourselves some quick little stripes there, and oh look. Now we're going to do something along the lines of this. Right here. And something similar up here. Like so. And we'll just hit the top of that shield. And oh, look, we're also going to, because we got a decent little bit of a light gray here. We're going to throw a little bit of lights on the furs. Now, it's one of the older painting pyramid ones, but it's, well, it's just called painting fur. I think I have an old, I don't know if it's a metal reaper wolf or something like that. I forget which, maybe it was a game zone one. But there I was, I was painting wolf fur. And we've done that on a few of the Song of Ice and Fire videos too. So here's some laces here. We're going to just get something there because I can, I can glaze over the top of those. And there was another one here that we had thought about doing the stripes on. And like so. This is an interesting one because of the way the folds go. Sometimes you just put the impression of a stripe there. Because, well, the last thing, I mean, you don't want him to look like Bozo the Clown or something. So I just see, and then I thin it down because the pants are sort of being gathered into his boots there or leggings. Once again, I am also going to take that opportunity to throw a little bit of this lighter tone onto the some parts of his furs there. I'm also not entirely sure what everything is on these. So sometimes I, I'm like, okay, that's what this is. Is that, oops, no, maybe that's supposed to be something else. And I am also going to take a little bit of my tan here. Now the brush is more like a filbert brush. And while I'm thinking about it, just going to throw a little bit of lighter tone on the base. For those of you, again, that maybe haven't seen some of the basing videos, this is the bark and branch method. And the blog address is just about to scroll across the screen. So you want to learn about bark and branch basing, just kind of the general principles of it. Well, it's there too. So we got some stripes on some pants. We've even messed with a few of our bases here. And you can see now that cloak is dried. Let's do an inside portion of that. And that's going to be, I'm going to go with a this brown liner here and really darken that up. Can you? It's going to be tough for you to even see what the heck it is. Because it is that dark. But I want to, I'm going to throw out some blue here. And this is just the secret weapon, verdigree blue. Let's add that also. And we're going to 
throw that right here, and that's going to look like, what? That is insanely bright. Well, we're going to do the stripe thing again. So that's going to really be broken up. Now, maybe I find another one where we can use this blue here. I'm going to take that, and I'm actually just going to mix some of that with the that skin color there. Now that's going to make a light gray that has a bit of a pinkish tone to it, but there's also some blue. So this is where we get all of this color variation between all of these different figures, but without having to really struggle with it. With it. Now, got the green cloak there. What the heck, I'm actually going to try and go with a this is the clear green, so that makes that even more intense of a green. And we will actually use some clear yellow to lighten that up. And you can see it's really translucent, and that's on purpose, because if I don't let that get toned down. It's going to be just too intensely bright. So I actually want all of that dark, all that dark color to show through. Like so. And then what do we do with his, his trousers? We're going to actually we'll go with something like this tan color here and see how that is. And then, see, is that, let's, let's go lighter. Let's just see what the heck happens if we go lighter. But this is actually a little bit of a greenish highlight now onto those pants. And this is essentially the same approach, because I'm using some of the maggot white here. This is the same approach that I used on those other figures that you saw kind of flash by in the opening there. So here we go. Now all of a sudden that the green that looked so light is now actually more of a dark. And this is all very translucent. You can see there's even some yellow in there. That sort of by default creates a little bit of color harmony. I'm even going to take some of that and hit the robe with it here and, and some of the highlight areas. Like so. Now We'll maybe later on, maybe we'll throw a little bit of freehand design on that, something along those lines. So here, I'm just going to get these pants, and I'm just going to make them lighter, just in general here. Like so. And not really going to mess around with the belt too much, but I guess I'm even going to throw a little bit of this crazy greenish color onto the furs here. Believe me, once this is all said and done, you won't even notice that's there. I'm even going to throw a little bit of that onto the helmet. I'm going to throw a little bit of that onto the axe. We've gone out of control. He's lost his mind. Because, look, he's even throwing it on the base. He stayed up too long. He's worked He's worked too many hours. He's, he's lost his mind. It's time to put him in the straitjacket. Well, maybe. Maybe not. Because I'm going to use that on this base, too. 
See how that starts to bring out some of that bark texture? It's not a dry brush by any means. Because look at that. You can see the water reflecting off of my hand. Because I'm using that feathered brush stroke that we talk about all the time. Yeah, look, I'm even doing a little bit of that on here too. And uh, these these straps here around his hand. Now we got to give him some kind of a loincloth type thing here. We're just going to mix that blue in with some of the red liner. So it's just this sort of dark muted blue here. Kind of a bluish purple. Then I'm actually going to remind myself, uh, what the heck, I'm going to make that just red there. Why not? And we'll do some blood effects on this. The idea is we'll have the snow here, and then we'll have the blood effects like we've done on some of the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. So what I'm going to do is just finalize a few more things there. The next thing we're going to get to is, is stuff like the weapons, maybe the helmets, the, the shields, right here, some of the armor. It all kind of falls under one generalized thing. So we'll be right back with that in just a second. Let's move on to some weapons here. And we've got, that's our mint green there. And a little bit of blue liner here. Mix those together. And it's just this really interesting sort of, well, seafoam gray. How about we'll call it that? And we're going to put some of that. In a way, it represents kind of a sky color. But we're not necessarily looking to do sky earth non-metallic here on these things. And this is what we're just trying to get here some. The look of some darker, non-super polished steel here. Because believe me, you hit that with white, oh my gosh, that would, or even that, was that the maggot white color there, the off-white blue, oh my gosh, that would be, this would look almost black by comparison. It's because we've established so much of the, that darker shadows and tints in the shadows straight away with that whole glazing process. And again, for those of you not familiar with how the Army Painting series work, that's how every series starts. It begins with me taking the prime figures and spending pretty much a couple hours just slapping glazes and tints over the top of them. And it's just, it's a really messy, messy process. Many makeup sponges are harmed during the pro during that process, I have to say. So just imagine those of you that have seen the dark sword things and that initial shading kind of stuff that happens there. Just imagine that on five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve figures like we did with the Rohan stuff. So that's or Rohan, whichever way. I say Rohan, you say Rohan, potato, potato, that kind of stuff. It's late, I get to do that kind of stuff. Let's see. Now this one, and yeah, I could just look at how dark that is compared to just the original seafoam color there. Now that, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with some gold on that. But I think maybe the surrounding outsides are going to stick with more of a metal type color. So there are some... This I guess is the other thing with the fantasy style figures. Is that stuff like the helmets and these axes get... They're, they're in some really unusual shapes. We'll put it that way. Some really unusual shapes. So we're going to do a few more 
things with our chain mail here and then we're going to start converting more into the straight up seafoam green at mint green like so now again, for those of you that say well what's the deal with this wet palette thing the last few videos I've, I've had to use it because with the, the rain and everything here I just we had to have air circulating in the house and we don't have the whole central air thing so fans are what we're going to rely on to push the air around the consequence of that is that it starts to dry out the paint like in seconds rather than hours or minutes now that could be really fun for oil painting but even here with the wet palette the stuff is still kind of drying just being exposed to all the breeze that's moving around in the house here so that's why I just I sort of came up with uh, that homemade palette and I think I think enough of you have seen now some of the the little intro sections of either the army painting series or the dark sword videos I could in theory just do a special how to make your own wet palette out of a Chinese food container thing. Yep, Chinese food container and chamois. The chamois which were used to try and keep the basement floor dry in a twist of fate have now become the ideal palette sponge. Now, I'm not going to use too much of that say on the wolf pelt there because I want that to have, be more of a warm gray there leave the cool gray for stuff like the metal surfaces like so like that now I've got to see, so there's one shield like that, so I want to save that one shield. There is a second one here. And this one, actually I want a little bit of color on this. So I am going to get some of this clear red working on this. And we're going to do something along the lines of this because we'll just do the knot work on one we've already done the knot work on a bunch of different shields you don't want that to get too repetitive there and the other fun thing that doing something like this means that I can actually reflect some of that onto the metal surface there so we'll We'll mark that. I'm also going to get a little bit of red here. I wasn't quite sure what color I wanted for that. And red gives it just a little extra splash of color there. And I'm also going to make this whole shield this reddish color here. And we'll do the knot work over the top of that. Because we got plenty of shields that are bluish and greenish. I think you can see by the shape of this shield, which is not exactly round, you know, there's some things going on with some of the sculpting, casting process, whatever you want to call it. And that's, you'll get that with some of the older figures or hand sculpted figures. See, I, I just that little bit of red and green together that's kind of fun and speaking of red and green together now I want even more red here we're gonna give him some really red here just for funsies and I'm gonna reflect some of that onto his helmet And let's get some of this red here onto this shield. You can see it's not really any kind of pure red, even though it's a highlight. There's some a little bit of orange in there. 
but I'm not worried about making this super smooth because A, it's just a roughly painted shield and B, we're going to have not work patterns over the top of it anyways. All right, so you saw how this is supposed to be about painting weapons and we're painting hair and we're painting clothes and what the heck we might even be since I've got it throwing a little bit of that on some of those little gem type things there now we gotta get some back to our bluish gray mix and start getting some of the some of the axe now this can get a little more of that cooler gray because I actually want that to be a little cooler. I want it to separate from all the other warm colors that are going on. And again, a little suggestion of armor there. And if I move fast here, or even say too fast for you, I apologize for that, but time is of the essence. So Sometimes I may have to accelerate forward faster than I normally would say with the army painting videos because those are those are tutorials. This is basically a work session that I'm trying to get a little bit of a tutorial in for you. It's just some kind of again a real life situation what is that the, oh gosh in, in the school real world well I think that's the phrase used so often real world education well this is more real world than say the controlled circumstances of an army painting session where that's all I'm working on is just those figures for you And the reason I do those, because the way I work on my armies, well, I can be more, well, I can definitely be way more creative with what I'm doing for myself. It's just it's the nature of the beast. That's the other thing that can be a surprise for folks, is that they now have to the creative part of things may not be under your control to say the least and are you willing to paint something a color that you just know is really not great uh, and, and you're gonna be dealing with people that maybe are just they think they know color but they really don't because just today you know, a circumstance where someone says, oh, I, I like the colors you did on this one way better than you did on the other one. They were all the exact same colors, but it was the same figure on foot and then the same figure on a gigantic horse with extra capes and way more armor on the horse. So it looked different. Everything was the same, but it looked different. And that those are the kind of things you will also have to deal with. Now, for those of you that aren't doing this for your livelihood or whatever, you can ignore all of that. Although, some what is that phrase that uh, we're all our own worst critics? And oh my gosh, I have seen people be so harsh on themselves that it's a miracle they paint at all because they're just they're constantly telling themselves that they're doing something wrong which leads to second guessing and then throwing stuff in the simple green which is just never a good idea I strongly advocate against the simple green believe me you can you can paint over it if what you've painted is so thick that a few layers more of paint is going to wipe out all your detail, then you're just painting a little too thick. And you might want to cut down on uh, add just a little bit of water to your paint, maybe. So here I'm taking this a little bit further. 
than I did on some of the other ones. Just want to develop that. Now here with each of these axes, oh my gosh, they're just they're each one is a different shape, so I have to treat each one a little bit differently. We're we're moving along here. And yeah, we still have there is much more that we can add in terms of light. Now, I could do blood effects on the axis too, but I think with, with this, that's supposed to be a little bit more of a special kind of thing where the character really warrants it instead of just everybody's got blood off their axes. As much fun as it would be to do that on the water, or on the snow, right? The blood effects on the snow. It's not necessarily something you'd want to do on every single figure. You know, part of it has to do with time, of course. So the helmet here. Now, remember, I'm trying not to necessarily work in that straight, pure horizon line type of thing. Here I can also go a little more cool gray with the fur there because we're probably going to have a leather type strap that's going to be more of a reddish tone. And we got the axe head here. And now there is going to be snow on his base, so we're probably going to want to get some decent light snow color type reflections on the underside of that. So again, I'm going to be moving a lot faster here. When I'm doing the army painting videos, that's why I do those. I have the sort of the luxury of kind of stopping to explain something. Don't have to keep charging ahead to the next one. Now, what do we have here? Do we have... Yes, we do have chain mail on there. I wasn't sure if there actually was. So again, we got that filbert brush going. Plenty of paint in there. It is not a dry brush. We are just using that feathered brush stroke over the top of our metals. Now we've got the spear head. Gonna hit some of that. And while I'm at it, so we're gonna now go into the this is the Maggot white. Gonna find a little bit of a some lighter tones here. So again, here now when we're doing some of the chain mail, some I've I've noticed with the cosplayer guys or whatever that wearing the chain mail suits, the rings are going kind of I don't want to say every which way but they're helter-skelter enough that the color is picked up in different ways or the light is picked up in different ways so that's something that I think to keep in mind and you can see we're just even now we're still doing more of an indication of shapes here and there Let's do this a little more here. Where are we at? I've noticed now again you, we have to sort of pretend that there's snow there because well there's not because the base ends. So you have to suggest that there's snow there. And we I don't get the and I we're just having a discussion about what you're starting to see on people that are doing the busts, well, they're hinting at an environment that's around it, even though it's not there, because it's a bust. But they're hinting that maybe there's a light source from below, or uh, what would you want to say? There's, like, we reflected the clothes. If you see, if you watch the video on the 
the mountain that rides and I just threw up a link to that and it's it's another one of the patron videos well you'll notice that that yellow cloak is reflected as often as possible on parts of the armor see we're just you can start to work in more and more of these lighter tones and as always probably what will happen is after I'm done filming here I'll, I'm gonna go back in They're just I cannot see it when when I'm doing this kind of camera work because I have to actually keep an eye on the screen I have to keep an eye in a million different places that aren't the miniature so sometimes I have to go back in and just kind of correct a few things or just stuff I didn't see like so so I'm going to have that lighter up there, lighter down there because maybe it's going to reflect some of the snow. Here we've got a little bit of the chain mail. Now this chain mail, obviously, it's very different than say the Song of Ice and Fire chain mail which is digitally sculpted. That was all done by hand. And that just, it has certain ramifications, needless to say. I'll just keep going here. Now this, for whatever reason, this axe is just, it's a bit easier to, to work on. Now some of these, I will say some of the axe heads here, in some ways I sort of re-sculpted them with my files. That's why I use those well, I call them jeweler's blocks. I know somebody else, other people call them different things. I will forever call them jeweler's blocks because to me that's what they are. Still working mostly with that maggot white. Because I can essentially reforge the swords. I had to do it on this one. So a lot of these weapons, I basically kind of had to go in and kind of sculpt them with my files. Because some of the shapes weren't exactly regular, or there's times where you just say, you know what, that's going to be a real pain if I try and paint it like the way it is. Now here I'm going to change things up a little bit, make that lighter there. And then later there, again, that's one of those things where we're sort of insinuating that the snow is sort of catching that from below. Let's see what we got. Yep, another one here. I couldn't necessarily do that on every single axe head because, well, there wasn't necessarily always enough for me to do that to. What we'll do in here is we can, later on, we can throw some little glazes of purple in there, some darker purple. We can go in there with glazes of blue liner. Now here I'm also going to do a little bit of stuff here on, on his furs. Like I said, I realize that this is supposed to be about, you know, weapons and armor and all that, but... I have just the color that I was looking for, just the right value that I was looking for. Instead of me kind of stopping and then going back, well, why not just do it now while I have that color? And just have a couple of more of these to do where we're sort of putting the lighter tones on there. I see there's a whole bunch of rings here. That's, we're gonna, I think we'll stick with gold on that. 
Actually, I may just do that in gold also. So let's just do the old accent here. And then I'm going to, once again, get into his furs here. Because we just had the color we were looking for, just the right thing. Gonna let that actually be dark. And. Alright. Yeah, that's a little thing under his chin there. That should probably be gold too. Working on the chain mail. We go off to the accent here. Now when you're doing the, let's say you're you're doing that thing where you're essentially reforging the weapons there, you're going to need a heavier file, especially where it's something like this where it's metal. So you're going to need a really strong heavy file to do that, but that will leave those burrs behind. You don't want those to be too obvious so you can either use a finer metal file or you can use those sanding sticks and I'm just going to show you these here because I've got them now sanding twigs sorry and you can see these come in all different grits and shapes those oh man once I found those Ah, oh, really, really enjoy those. They're fantastic. They're great on plastic, resin, and they actually work on the bones, plastic, especially the stronger grit, because that was the first thing we noticed about all the bone stuff is we couldn't do anything with those darn mold lines. And I know that some of the stuff that I've been doing, it's we're kind of off on little streams of consciousness. It's almost like a, not a pot, like a Twitch broadcast or something. Well, it is, but it's just for you guys. I can do basically YouTube lives just with the Patreon thing now because I've developed the YouTube channel enough. Believe it or not, it took me several months oh man several months to, to get the youtube channel to the degree where it would let me do youtube lives and, and other things so if you're wondering why there are videos that are st posted to the youtube channel well i have to have a certain amount of views every month to be able to have all these different options to, to show you more videos so but I figured this is one way it's sort of the advantage of doing a YouTube live but it's just for you guys it's more, again you can't ask me questions but I'm trying to anticipate your questions all right now what I want to do is before we get too far into the all of the more metal, silver type stuff. Let's find a few places where we want some goldish stuff to be. Just gonna hammer this out real quick here. Just even gonna paint over that stupid gemstone in some places. Gotta be willing to change on the fly and sometimes <laughs> change is destructive. Gonna do that. Anywhere else. Not on him. I know this guy on his crest here. Like that. And yeah, we'll hit it on his the mask there. Even gonna throw a few little touches of the that gold color on my on the wood, and I'm even gonna 
just on the skull here in a few places get a little bit of that more yellowish type color let's see if now here instead of using it as a gold we're going to use it as more of a tan for that pouch just to make it look a little bit different and even just through a few quick little highlights onto the hair I don't want this to be as blonde as that, that one guy where we really went blonde with it. And that would be this guy. So we won't do too much in the way of gold stuff on him. And do we see any here? Not quite. There's just a couple of buckles there, so we'll hit the hair in just a couple of spots now when you when you're doing something like like I do where every day practically you're working on a different type of sculpting you know you're bouncing back and forth from true scale to heroic scale hand sculpted stuff versus zbrush sculpted stuff metal versus resin monsters everything else oh yeah and speaking of monsters this is another tutorial that we're working on here it's another creature caster figure so we're going all sort of ice demon themed yeah, this one's been really fun. So I can't wait for you to see that. And believe me, it's about as different as you could get from some of the stuff that you've seen me working on. And hopefully by doing all of these different things, like those crazy mantic fish dudes that I was telling you about and some of this other stuff, it, it creates something that either gives you an idea for your armies, for your figures, for your contest stuff. You haven't even seen all the big child creatives figures that I've been prepping like crazy. Those are, I finally was able to get those primed up. So believe me, this is, there is so much more that's coming. Now, Obviously, as I've said before, when you do the, when you sign up for the army painting pledge level, well, you get to see absolutely everything. Now I have the, the dark sword level, the black heart models, that sort of thing. The basing pledge level. And that gets you a fair portion of the stuff. Definitely a decent portion of it. But all of that other kind of stuff... The, the big child creative stuff, the, the diorama things, there's some sculpting videos that I'm, I, well, I sort of have to make because I got sculpting to do. And just like this, I was going to try and do some sculpting videos. I also want to do some scratch sculpting. Those will all be, well, basically different pledge levels. Working with some golds here, too. Now what I'll be doing is some glazes over the top of that with some some orangey. Again, that's a that's a word. That is a color. Orangey is a color. I have made it a color. Just trying to get a few little peaks of yeah, the lighter stuff here so that when I go over it with the darker glazes, it's gonna bring some of that out again. Now, now the these things right here. I was thinking, okay, you do the white feathers, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's neat. But what if maybe you go more Viking and it's more of a raven type thing? Was that that Hunin and Moonin or whatever? The the raven and the the serpent. So let's let go with actually some darker wings here just as an experiment see if that works 
I don't like it. I can always make it lighter. And I'm just going to let that stand for right now. But what we've got to do here is, now that I've got my blue liner, we're going to bring in a few darks back into our armor surfaces here. Like so. And on this spear tip, We're going to put that in there, and then we'll go in with our earth color on the other side that'll lighten that up just a touch. We're putting that sort of default horizon line in some places. I'm just going to darken some of that down with some blue liner right there. Remember we talked about some blue liner glazes on our chain mail. We're going to do that here. Just like that. Let's see who's next. Once again, that sort of broken horizon line on the helmets. Now, just occurs to me as I say that, that Probably a fair portion of the, the people here, they haven't seen any of the army painting things, so they're not familiar with that. Oh, wait a minute, what do you mean broken horizon line? So I used to, when I did, say, horizon lines on stuff like helmets, it was always this unbroken, it, it, was, un, it, the, it was undulating. The shape was different, but it was always this continuous line. And the more I started to look at those cosplayer armor type things, the more I started to realize, well, wait a second. Actually, you're seeing individual trees in their armor. You're seeing the people standing around them, the people standing next to them. So I needed to change my thought process on that a bit. And ever since I started to do that, I was really way more satisfied with any kind of sky earth effect that I did. See we're making that a little darker. Now we got a bit of a transition here. So you can always throw in some glazes at any time. Don't be afraid to glaze. See I'm glazing right over his hair. Just glazing in a few darks here. Wipe those away. I could could use a sponge too if I needed to. And like I said, we can always do some glazes. Now I've got a little thing off camera. There wasn't just enough room to put everything there. As much as that palette cam, uh, the wet palette fits nice into the palette cam uh, area. The aspect ratio. Yeah, I'm even going to throw a little bit of glazes there. Yeah, let's... Don't want to mess too much with our axe head there. We just want to get some glazes in on our chain mail. Like that. Now we've got our horizon line here and see how that's broken up that's more of a the dots there that could be basically the people stand around them it could be a tree line it could be one of many different things we are going to have to do the same thing on his helmet here so same thing here see how that that just stops right there that used to like I said be a continuous line but now we break that up so this his, okay, good. And finally got clear of his axe. So right there. That little bit. See how there's three different shapes there? Well, next thing we are going to do while we are thinking about it here, I'm actually going to go into some of this reddish 
gray color here. I'm just going to work that right in there. So it's almost like those are the guys standing around him. Because, hey, that's really fun. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get some of that clear yellow back out here. Let's see if we can... I'm also going to get some... Just some white out here, because we're working on our golds. We're going to get a little bit of a few little highlight things on our gold before we go back in and do some glazes over the top of those. Doing that. The, the hilt of that sword or the dagger there. All right, we've got definitely some to do right here. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that. Now, as always, I like to keep these segments, well, ideally at 35 minutes. Once it hits 45 minutes here, and just end the segment here, and then we'll move on. And we'll just go into some general highlighting and sort of tie in some things together. Because I do want you to see some of the snow effects happen too. Let's see, yeah, that one's not gold there. Well, there'll be some highlights, some glazes, there'll be a bit of freehand, maybe. It will see. This Again, this is it's a little bit different than the typical, say, army painting video. Or I have a... I can pretty much dictate every last little thing that I'm doing. Sometimes here, in this case, the, the miniatures, they demand, <laughs> they have their own schedule. All right, we got some, some more golds over here on this guy. Doing the same thing. And... With the golds, I, I like to use oranges and purples and that sort of thing that just really livens those up. But then I also like to throw some of those greens in there. It's weird you would think green is what's more like a verdigree thing for, for copper. Actually, having some greens in your golds can really be a fun, helpful thing. So, yeah, I think I'm going to actually do that as probably another... Oh, that's going to be a blue gemstone in there because I want to have the bluish black, essentially, of the, the raven wings there because I thought... Now that's neat. You always see the white wings or whatever. Yeah, we'll go blue on that gem there too. So we're going to try and get a little bit of reflected light there. And uh, before I head off to do the next little bit here, let's see if we can't make a little bit of an orange. And get some of that because we've got these this lemon yellow. We just need a little bit of warmer. This is that. Let's see a little bit of orange in the golds here. And then we've got some of this red liner here, and that's like we did on the. 
Other store, we're going to give ourselves a bit of a horizon line there. And let's say we don't necessarily like the green there. All right, I'm actually just going to take some of that same red liner. And we're just going to do a little bit of a glaze here. And now we've really changed the entire look of that shield and really made our yellows even more dramatic there. So I like that a little better. So what we're going to do then is we'll move on to do some other some other highlighting, work on these wings, some of it maybe even freehand. They'll just kind of be thrown into the other details section of the program. So we'll be right back with that. So we're going to throw in some final highlights and other things here. Just looking to do something like this. I'm going to take the some of the red liner, some of that ochre color. I'll just get some definition in some of these spots here. Even here, up on the top of his helmet there, you can see we did some stuff with the wings here. Basically just a blue liner and the and just some white and made progressively lighter bluish grays in that in that area there. You can see we did some stuff with the gemstones here. Then I'll probably do when I have the secret weapon water effects out for the snow, then I'll go in and I'll throw that little bit of gloss over the gemstones. That gives it just enough of a translucent effect. It makes it look like your highlights then, like I said, when you do that little dot, I think we talked about this in a recent Dark Sword episode, when you, you can paint in the little dot to make your highlight, say, right up there. You can do that, but it doesn't travel with your light source. I know it sounds weird, but right now there's probably seven different lights pointing at this thing from all different angles to prevent shadows from forming. Well, when I do that little secret weapon or any kind of art coat, whatever it is, it's a little bit of a glossy type thing, that's just enough to give it an effect where all of those little dots of light will show up, even on that tiny little gemstone. So much easier than trying to paint that in because... This is about army painting after all, and time's a wasting. So now we're again, still working on our. I, I did definitely like the the reddish change to this. So we're still gonna keep going in with our gold, essentially like a sun type of a thing going on right here. Now what I will do is I'm gonna take some of that. Blue line, I do a little bit of a glaze there to darken that down. Same thing here. Kind of gave more of a white beard. I don't think I'd done that on anybody so far. See, even just throwing a little glaze over the top of those things to knock those down. Now, everything here has been hyper accelerated as far as what I normally do with the army painting. Obviously, the typical army painting series is five episodes long and they're um, average two hours each. So you can tell we've really accelerated this. That's why I've done a lot of stuff off camera because this is not meant to be an army painting series. This is just to give you a flavor of what it is like to, to work on multiple figures and what the mindset is. Not so much, well, do this, do that. That's what the Army Painter series are for, because those are really involved. And I would take you through 
the basing process. Yeah, here, yeah, we'll see the snow and blood effects, a little bit of that. But when I do a typical army painting series, you're seeing that entire process. Because there's a discussion about well, the, the footprint of each miniature. We paint the bases. There's a discussion how long you, you spend on a given effect. And then you multiply that. Because here, this is just... This is 8 out of about, I don't know, 20 some odd figures here. So anything that I do on one of these, something along the lines of freehand, which we'll do on here, like we've done on this. So let's get our slightly lighter color going here. First I want to do a little bit of reflected light there and now the somewhat kind of watered down color what we're going to do is remember how we were doing things in quarters with those two other shields well, we're going to do four little arcs right here sort of positioned evenly And then what we do is we play a little bit of connect the dots. So actually I see I, I need to make my arcs a little bit longer here. And now what we're going to do is get this from here. And I believe, yep, it's got to go over to here and connect with that. Then this one to go from here all the way over to there. Now this one has to go all the way over to here and connect with that. This one has to go from here all the way over to here and connect with that one. So you can see we've got our basic pattern down. Now we can add some lights to it and what we need to do is create an over under pattern and this is going to be an over. I'm gonna grab some more of this lighter yellow here. So that's over and that's under. Then this line needs to go over there. So this line needs to go over here and we'll keep turning this around. Where are we at here? Okay, so that's over. This one has to be an over. Then you can see that's an over. Then it goes under there. Now you could do it the other way around. You could shade the part that's the under or whatever. I'm going to grab some of that maiden flesh here. And this will be sort of the final light that we add to this. And just to, there we go, magnify the over and the other. There we go. Just that. We just turn it around. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to wear. Usually, I wear a glove so that you don't you don't see my skin color sort of contrasting with the figure itself. Again, I was just more concerned with trying to get this just these basic ideas across than anything else. See, we can. Now bring in some of those warm lights that we were talking about here on the surface of our wolf pelt. Let's see if we can't maybe throw in some eyes there. And now usually 
with the wolves, the top of the snout there tends to be almost like an orangey type of a fur tone. Now let's get the rest of the muzzle painted in here. So we're doing this obviously in a warmer color here because we want it to contrast with that cooler metal of the chain mail. Like so. And all of this now, I always mention this too in all the army painting series, the, the level of detail is, is up to you. However much you personally need on your project The other thing, too, that I talk about all the time on the army painting stuff is get things to a certain level. Even here, okay, let's say we don't have the snow effects on here or the blood effects. Well, you could always play a game or two with these. Sometimes you never know. You might want to change your list around, something along those lines. And then you can, after you played the game you can stick the guys back on your little figure holders or whatever and guess what and go back in and do some more painting on those so I, I've done that with units certainly or armies where I've just I didn't want them to be just primered or just not even painted at all so I would at least take them to a certain degree and then use them in a game, then go back and paint some more with them. And nothing stopping you from doing that. So I'm going to throw some more of just this is regular old white going out here. And just going to find a few, a few of these brighter accents just to bring out is it here on the sword? Not the sword, the axe head. I'll do one here. And this is the kind of thing that I've been doing on all of the other figures again. I just didn't have the time to make this a eight hour video. Man, I don't think you wanted to see an eight hour video. I think you want to see them in smaller chunks than that. As we add some some white here. Just a few little touches here and there. But that wolf pelt has, it's got some greens and it's got some yellows, pinks. But what are you going to see? It's going to look kind of grayish. And that's... That's what gives your, your miniature paintings that extra little bit of depth that it just needs it, it, to kind of captivate the viewer and then let them want to have to see more. You always want to leave them wanting more. So here's our little skull right here, but that's another thing I'll talk about with but skulls at times, there's usually this notion where you paint it bleach bone and then you just do a brown wash over it, whatever. But you know, some skulls tend to get weathered themselves and stained. So there you go. There's your shield right there. Now, just I'm going to throw some clear red back out here. And hopefully with these little gemstones here, we can do something along the lines of what we did with the blue one on that other figure. Now we'll take some of the, some of our yellows and oranges here and lighten that up on this because you got the, the darker part of the gemstone there, obviously. And then the lighter part. 
and we'll get even more light under here. It has to be sort of an extreme thing, and you want that top part to obviously be then dark as well. And here, yeah, let's get some of this red liner just to make sure we have enough delineation between some of these things. Just trying to, again, make sure this is where you can see it. I almost instinctively just painted that little highlight in there. Yep. Now again, here let's... Uh, as a little bit of a preview, I think I might do that, is take out some of the secret weapon water effects that we're going to use for snow anyways. And we'll throw that little bit of a gloss coat over this. And it does, it takes very little, very little. And then you'll see what I mean. Actually going to get a little bit of a more red up there. Okay, so where's our, here's the two figures. Where we're going to throw that little bit of gloss stuff on. And we'll use the secret weapon water effects because that's what we're going to use with our our snow here. So, and when it says do not shake, it means do not shake. And the writing on there is so small to remind ourselves. We said, we just wrote do not shake. Alright, so I'm going to throw this here. And it doesn't take much. It's only going to take a drop or two. And won't show up too much on that one. It might, yeah. See that? How it shows up on that one. And it should most definitely show up there. The other thing it does is it provides one little extra layer of... Yeah, see, see all those? Look at that. See how it's following the lights there? It's just a fun little thing. I didn't used to do that. I used to paint in all the little dots. And then I realized, you know what? Maybe I should be painting in all the little dots. Uh, just doing this gloss stuff. Because look at that. See how that light moves? Look at that. How it moves across. The other thing too is now you've got this little bit of a... Just a gloss in one spot. Just one spot alone. That's it. Alright. With that complete, what we are going to do... Is we're going to get our palette off of here. And we're going to do our snow effects. And that's going to be with the crushed glass method here. So we'll be right back with that in just a second. So what we want to do is get our snow effects in here. And we're going to use, this again, the secret weapon stuff. Because I think, yeah, look at that. Normally this gets burned out. I think that this new lighting system, it doesn't get burned out. See how crystalline it is? Look at how that moves around. You see the individual crystals. It's one of the big advantages it's also, it's real sturdy, but the other thing too is it, it's, it has more depth to it. You can pile it up and you can make it thinner and more translucent here. So it's almost like it's been melted. And when you do the blood effects, that's really, that's also really special there. So yeah, we got a couple of guys here. Let's put this down. I just, just a little butter container lid. I'm going to make sure this is where you can see it. Now, got to be careful with this stuff. I really, I'd probably, may I'll throw my glove on too. But the reason I got this is because you want to catch all those particles. And you want to get this lid on there because those little, they're like tiny little glass balls and they'll just roll around. Whatever you do, you don't want to blow on that because you will now have tiny glass particles flying all over the place. And I'm thinking you really don't want that. That's kind of a bad thing. So we are going to put the secret weapon water effects over here. And you're going to use a little bit of this at a time. 
You're not going to go crazy and use a ton of it all at once. And this, we got these here so that we can have them meet in the middle. And the more water effects you have, or realistic water, the more melted your snow is going to be. So we're just going to pile this up here. And we're going to only use, again, a portion of it. So this is a little bit puffier right here. That means it's not going to be quite so melted in appearance. And now we're going to stick this on here and then so I could put static grass on here and then uh, the army painter guys you're familiar with me taking the static grass and having the snow over the top of it so here we don't want to have the foot be too isolated so we're going to make sure that our snow makes it there too and we're just gonna we, we could also then take some of the some of this right here we could even dust that over the top of that and what it would do is make it even more sparkly that can get a little bit messy I even have a bigger container for something like that because it tends to want to then scatter all over the place but it does really yield an interesting effect now you also don't have a infinite working time with this it's another reason much like with green stuff where you just you make yourself a batch and you use that batch and when you need more you mix more and I strongly suggest you do the same with your snow and you can see sometimes we have an overhang. If I had some little tree branches and stuff, we could do ice, icicles on that. So there we are. There's a couple. Let's do another one here. You also might want to have multiple brushes handy because you can see how this gets starts to get sort of piled up in there. These are just the same old cheap craft brushes that we use in all the videos. You can clean this stuff out of there with rubbing alcohol. Here. Oh, and another hard lesson that I learned is that, let's say you're going to clean the, out this stuff with water just temporarily to keep the brush going. Well, you better make sure that's some brand new water because I've had some pretty dirty snow or unusually colored snow because that was my paint water and now the snow has absorbed all of the paint water color so here see we're just having that like uh, go over the edge there just a bit just a bit this stuff will take a little while to set so that's why we will do the blood effects after this is has set up and in the few places we're going to do that see i'm just going to start smashing that stuff down put it out there usually a second brush makes that process a little bit easier you get sort of a feel for this so you got a nice little mound right there you will have to just try it and maybe you just experiment in small little things. Don't go to try a whole diorama with this stuff as your first attempt. I would really strongly suggest you you start with something easier, something smaller. So see how that just kind of flowed right down there? We're just going to leave that go. Not going to mess with it. And here, so I can have some more translucent snow. Or I can mix some another little batch here and have that cover a little more now we'll just I'm going to throw out one last bit of the realistic water here 
And then the, our last and final segment, it's going to be doing a, a few little blood effects here and there. And like I, I've said a few times, this is definitely an accelerated lesson. Normally, there would be a lot more going on in between steps. This is just to give you a little bit of a flavor. We're just going to have that snow right over that base. And again, the more realistic water is in there, and we're just going to scrape up some more. Yeah, another one there where it just sort of flows over an edge. Don't cover absolutely everything. And see how we're just kind of piling up some there along the edge. And I'll pile up a little more here. There you go. So what we'll do is the I'm gonna finish off the rest of these bases, let that set, and then we'll come back in with our blood effects next. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna throw some blood effects down on our few of these guys here. We got three different things we're gonna use. We've got this true blood from Green Stuff World. That is the lighter stuff over here. In the middle, we've got Ghost Tint Fresh Blood. That's from Badger. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then we have our red liner paint. And that's this darker material over here. And the idea is that the Fresh Blood and the True Blood, they give us that sort of transparent glossiness. And the red liner gives us a little bit more of a coagulated blood type of a look. So let's grab one that for sure I wanted to do this to just because the sword blade just or the axe head was just a little bit wonky there. And what we'll do is we're going to start out with the this is the blood from the true blood from green stuff world. And what we also want to do is sometimes have something like this to give it that extra transparent nature. See how we're just pulling that along? And then we'll get a little bit of a residue and, and spatter there. Now will flip this over to the other side. And we'll do this something similar. And then we'll just we'll get rid of some of that extra and then trying to think along the lines of gravity and such let's try and pull some of these along and what we'll do is we'll fudge this just a bit and then we're gonna try and get a little bit of blood effects in our snow here you've seen me do this on the dogs what's really fun about this snow is because it is transparent see how the blood effect is almost blend it in there where it just practically disappears in some places that just makes it instead of just one big blob or whatever or a few big blobs that just having that extra little bit of motion to it that's really that is nice and I mean as realistic as you're gonna get essentially so let's try doing something like that over here like so and again the idea is to you start off with one layer obviously and you darken it down with each progressive layer so I can even you know, get rid of some of this and have almost a bit of spatter there on the pants and now that gives a little interesting look to our stripes and such that we put on there and now we'll go here onto the base now this it doesn't quite have the same impact say on the rock section as it does on the snow but it's not it's not too bad because remember this is our lighter 
blood that we're throwing down. I was trying to think of almost like a little bit of a blood channel or whatever. The rocks kind of go this way, so we're having it sort of fall down the base. Now I've got to think, which ones are we doing this on? Which ones are we not? Let's see. Maybe... Well, I think we'll just stick it on those two. So now we're going to go into the fresh blood here. We're going to mix a little bit of that red liner in there. What that does is, like I said, gives it more of a coagulated look. And here, see how I'm just sort of scraping it along the edge. I think you can see, yeah, you can see how there's a little bit of depth and dimension to it there. That's part of the goal. Now, let's have some of that down here. And I think you'll see what we're trying to do. We're going sort of in the center of that. Now we'll go with a little more of the red liner. This is to really get the coagulated look here. But you see how that's sort of centered there? And then we'll go the rest of the way here. And what we might even do is find a few of these drops here that we can kind of reinforce with that. And if I feel like I've lost the subtle edge in that, I can go back in with the true blood. Now let's get in here and really make that deep and dark and rich so that's that's going to help now let's get it down onto our rocks like so and there you have it so like I said, I could have done it on some of the other ones. I don't want to do it all the time here. I was mostly doing it just because there were a few little areas where things were just a little wonky. And I decided to clean those areas up. So this gives you a little bit of a taste of what's happening on those army painting videos. Again, if you already support that level, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen this play out over several episodes. So, those of you waiting for Series 10, that's already well underway. And yes, it's already Army Painter Series 10. So thanks again, everybody, for supporting me on the Patreon page. There would None of this would be possible without that support. So I'll catch you on the next episode. I'm filming another Dark Sword today, and that's also going to be up really soon. So thanks again, and then I'll catch you on the next episode.